Hello there, this is David from David Books and Comics, and today you're looking at the artwork of Jim Aparo. And uh, this is not a DC book, this is actually The Phantom in a Charlton uh, series. Now, The Phantom initially appeared in uh, Gold Key, and uh, in beautiful, in these beautiful painted covers. And then uh, was for a short time with King Comics when King, uh, the copyright owners of the Phantom at the time, um, did a small run of comic books with some excellent artwork, especially on the Flash Gordon series. And then uh, Charlton picked up the character, uh, bought the rights, uh, the, cop the rights to uh, produce the Phantom series, and it featured first this excellent artwork by uh, Jim Aparo. Now, who is Jim Aparo? Jim Aparo was born in Connecticut, in Connecticut, I should say, in 1932, and died at the age of 72 in 2005, also in Connecticut. And if you know anything about Charlton Comics, well, Charlton Comics was based, was one of the, was the third string behind, uh, Marvel and DC, uh, and but it was based not in New York City like the other two uh, giants, but based in Derby, Connecticut. The unique thing about uh, Jim Aparo, of course, is that uh, he uh, drew, inked, and lettered all of his comic books. And as you can see on the cover, that's his artwork in the lettering. And uh, this is a beautiful cover. He started not in this issue, but in issue number 30 of, um, of uh, The Phantom. This is the second issue after that. So I'm miss missing number 30 and I think number 32. All right, so we'll go through the issues that I have. It's not a complete collection, but it's a near complete collection of Jim Aparo's artwork in The Phantom. Um, his most notable comic work and assignments was working on uh, Brave and the Bold. And, and uh, he worked on the uh, that series from issue 100 all the way up to issue 200 with only a few time, uh, a few um, misses in between. Um by issue 107, you'll see that uh, on that cover that uh, he was uh, hitting his stride. He's also remembered for his work on uh, the Spectre in the pages of Adventure Comics, uh, the Silver Age Spectre, some beautiful artwork that he did there. That was the first time that I actually noticed and saw Jim Apparel's work was on the pages of the Spectre from Adventure Comics. From there, he went on to work in Detective Comics, where we see some of the most memorable work on Batman, especially with issue uh, number uh, 427, I think it was, of Detective. What you will see today will be my collection of Apparel's work on The Phantom, a lesser known and less talked about contribution he made to the world of this uh, to this world famous superhero. Now, one of the things to note is that uh, initially uh, the person who hired him was Dick Giordano when he was the editor of Charlton back in uh, 1965, 66, where he started doing some fill-in work. But I think the highlight of his Charlton work is on the Phantom. So we can go through that. And I have the issues all open up for you so we can uh, have a deep look through. So we have him on the cover. So that's Aparo's work on the cover. In this issue, The Phantom of Shangri-La. And it's a full story. Most of the Phantom run was made up of uh, short, short stories. This one is a complete adventure you can already see the fine detail in the artwork 
and the unique use of paneling that he has with the odd angles. It's not as traditional as one would imagine from a superhero comic. The artwork is excellent. As you can see by the backgrounds, The focus, again, will not be uh, so much on the story as on the art. And there's the Phantom with his Phantom Ring. He had two rings, one that he used to uh, mark criminals So there, there is a. This one is a lost, a lost empire, a lost city uh, story. It has your typical uh, fill-ins, text, and a fill-in story. So this is a two-parter. You can see. Just incredible artwork, as always. One of the better. It just gets better as the, as the issues go on. And this is where he came into the fore. So this is a 24-page story. All right, so that's issue number 31. Issue number 32, I thought I had, but it has a beautiful cover. I know what I'll be looking for when I find it. So this is issue number 33, The Phantom's Death. With the Jim Apparel cover. The interior art is by Pat Boyette. And we'll see more of Pat Boyette's work in the future. It's not his best. Well, yet would get better. It has some uh, interesting uh, and unique use of paneling. So the cover is apparel, but the interior is Pat Boyette. There we have. And that's Apparel, The Phantom's Death by Jim Apparel. And you can see the lettering is his. Detail. You can see the contrast between Boyette and his artwork. Although nothing bad to say about Boyette, I think Boyette is an excellent artist. And there you see the phantom has already marked him as a criminal. It's like an indelible tattoo that they that he gives when he punches the, the bad guys. All right. And there you see the end of that story. And that's the phantom's death. And this one is the giant ape of Toth. This one is a very good copy. This was published in October of 1969, The Cliff Kingdom. And the script, Norm De, De Plume. So, more than likely, uh, Jim Apparel wrote the script. I'm not sure, though. If some of you know, please let me know and let us know. And I thank everyone who's uh, uh, commented and corrected some of my mistakes. Uh... 
as you can see, just incredible detail. The trademark of a great artist, who one who cares about what the reader sees on the page, which helps the continuity. And there you can see his skull ring. On the other, on the other hand, he wears a ring with the letter P, um, which is the Phantom's protection. The artists of Charlton had a lot of leeway to create their work. And the stories often, um, even though they had the comics code, often went beyond the parameters of the comics code. So, anyway, so the bad medicine man, that's in a small story here. I don't know who the artist is. It looks familiar. And here's another apparel artwork, The Giant Ape of Toth. So this one's an anthology book. Beautiful artwork. Look at that detail. The jungle. Just beautiful stuff. There you go. And this is for all the people that have commented on the books and comics that I've shown in the past on the Phantom. All the, there's a lot of them out there. All over the place. Here's another uh, beautiful cover by uh, Jim Apparel, signed. Number 35. And this is the Phantom, the Ghost Tribe, Part One, and this this one is drawn by Bill Leganti, and you can see the contrast, how uh, Aparo's work compared to Leganti's work. Leganti is more traditional as a comic book artist. He's a competent artist, knows how to draw in accordance with his story, obviously. But he pales in comparison to um, Jim Apparel. And there you have Don Perlin's art. And this is the Ghost Tribe. Interesting story, and like I said, it's very traditional in the use of paneling, artwork, and the whole bit. Not quite up to the standard of Jim Apparel. Anyway, there's his cover, number 35. And this beautiful cover, The River That Never Ends. And beautiful cover. I love the swirl. Just a unique masterpiece of a cover. The river that never ends. And there you have. You can see the difference now. The details, the use of the paneling to add to the action in the story. Just incredible work. And there you have the expressions that you would later see in the Batman books. Just wonderful stuff. This is a long story. This is part two. Building up to the Denima. Look at that detail. There you are. And then the, when the action starts, all the twists and turns of um, suspense. 
All right. And then you have the promise of Akrashi. And who else but Steve Ditko. Look at that. And this is Ditko's work. Look at that. There he is. So much for that. And the Phantom in very special timber. Art Jim Aparo. Great story, great lettering, great inking. And then the action starts. And the comic book is obviously damaged, as you can see there. There you go. Beautiful work. Nice short story. So that's The River That Never Ends, one of the best covers of his on his run. And this I've had for years, this low grade uh, book. I've not found another one that's as high, uh, better grade than this one. So this is the Bandar Betrayers. And if we look through that, and there we have. This one came out uh, number 37, April 1970. That many pages for 15 cents. The Bandar Betrayers. And this one is a lower grade book, as you can see. You can see the action, the use of coloring. The suspense as it builds. Beautiful stuff. And so it ends. And this one is a short, and this is typical artwork of Pat Boyette, an unusually gifted artist. And we'll get into Boyette's work sometime in the future. And meanwhile, we have Jim Aparo, disband the Jungle Patrol. And as we know from the Phantom books, that the Jungle Patrol is uh, the uh, the commander of the Jungle Patrol is the Phantom, who passes secret notes to the person in charge. That's how the Jungle Patrol uh, exists. And that's when he learns that it has to be disbanded. And we slowly find out why. All right. So this is a good minus copy, number 37. And last but not least of the Jim Aparo run is issue number 38. And three complete, complete uh, exciting adventures of the beautiful cover of uh, one of the better covers of... Um, the Phantom, done by Jim Aparo. And it's one of his best stories, as you can see here. The Dying Ground, The Trap, and The Phantom's New Faith. All right. And there is the mythical place where the elephants go to die. That's that one. And there 
here's the phantom. He's captured. The elephant comes into charge. And he's defeated. And then we have the phantom's new fate. This is a beautiful uh, splash page. Wonderful story, almost fantasy related. Well, many of these have science fiction and fantasy elements with lost worlds and lost empires and mythical beasts showing up. And we have a Don Perlin story. An SF story. With a little twist at the end. And the origin of the Phantom retold. That's the origin. Excellent issue. One of the better issues in the series. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the work of Jim Aparo on The Phantom. Uh, and if you did, remember to do that uh, like, comments. Thanks, everyone, for subscribing. And thanks, everyone, for watching. All right. Thanks. Bye.